Hello there, this is Toby. Welcome back to the series where we make a programming language together. Uh, we're making a programming language called Smallang, uh, which is a, as the name conveys, very small programming language that you can build yourself as your first programming language. We have built out most of the language. Uh, this time we're going to implement comments so that you can comment your code. <laughs> Somehow I felt the language wouldn't be complete without the ability to have comments in your code. And then hopefully we get done early with that and then we can actually solve a code challenge or two, which will most likely result in finding holes in the programming language and have to add features to it. And we'll, we'll tackle those as we go. Okay, so first thing, let's implement comments in the language. The Lexer already has a rule for comment. We just stole that right out of mood.js. And now we're going to utilize that in our grammar. Let's open up the grammar file. And let's say uh, we're going to allow line comments in the same level as our statement. So perhaps a comment is allowed here, like so. Let's just see what that gives us. I, I would expect that something like this would be allowed. So let me make a new file. Example six. I'm just gonna make a copy of the last program, except I'll add a couple of comments. Okay, so let's see if we can parse this file now. So we generated the parser. Now let's parse the example number six and it was happy with that. So let's look at the AST and there it is, a comment. So great, uh, if we generate the code now, uh, it says unhandled AST node comment. Well, we could spit out the comment in our JavaScript code. I'm going to actually choose to ignore it. Let's put in a clause for handling comments. I'm going to just ignore it by returning an empty string. Let's see if it likes that. Let me see what came of that. That looks just fine. Okay, now that we are able to write comments in our code, let's solve a code challenge. We're going to do this Roman numerals encoder. Very classic kata. One should map to i and five should map to v so forth. I haven't done this in a while, so I might have to uh, figure this out from first principles all over again. Oh, I just realized that our runtime doesn't have any string functions. We're definitely going to need some string functions, I think. Let's add a concat function for strings. Although I suppose we could just use the add, but I actually prefer having a concat function for strings. I'll say S1, S2 to be explicit that this is for strings. I'll call this Roman that small. I guess I'll call this function to Roman. It should take a number n. Oh. This is actually kind of a complex problem. But let's just start simple and say if number is equal to one, then we want to return the string i. Else, if number is two. Wow, this is gonna get a little tedious, I think. Okay, let's start with that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's print one goes to to Roman of one, let's do this up to five. Okay. Uh, we have an ambiguous grammar detected. Ouch. Okay, let's compare the two. There's actually no difference between the two, so that means, again, it has something to do with white space. I'm thinking the ambiguity might be having to do with this body because I did test our Fibonacci file, which did not have this bracket for the body. So I'm actually going to check the grammar for the bracket version, which is that one. 
and this one says there needs to be a mandatory line break here and then we use a statement over here oh statements can have white space at the beginning and the end i see so this is white space here and then we have statements and then we have white space. So this white space is a mandatory line break, which means there's like one or more new lines, and but both here and here, plus some optional white space on either side, more or less. That there can be more than one new line actually. But in essence, this is a white space and this is a white space. But then within statements, which is defined here. There can also be multi-line white space at the beginning and the end. So the parser is confused because it, when it sees white space, it could either match it as this guy here, or it could also match it as this guy. Because both of those things are, uh, there's some optional element to it. So I think what I'm going to do is remove this white space from both sides of this rule here, but have a new rule, I'll call a program, which is the top level. That would have this white space, like that. The first rule of a, a nearly grammar file is always the top level. Um, and then I'm gonna remove it from here. Now I need to be careful to shift my indexes. So this one would be one now, and this one would be zero now. But this one stays the same because the it's the index within this nested array here. And then this lambda body would still reference this statement, which now no longer has the leading white space or the ending white space. So I think this should solve the ambiguity. Let me try it. Yes, that solved the ambiguous grammar problem. However, we now have a unhandled note type undefined. So let's see what that is. And we don't even get a type. Let's print the entire node or JSONify it. Let's just print out the whole thing and see what it is. Okay, it turned out to be an array. So there's something of type new line that um, made its way into the AST. Should not be too hard to diagnose this because it should be in the AST and there it is. So I'm gonna search just in case there's multiple ones of these. And there are, there are multiple ones of these new line things snuck into the AST. Uh, oh, because we haven't written a converter for our program. I'm going to return index one. So I think that should fix it. And it did. Okay, great. Uh, let's run example number six. Great. Now let's run the Roman program. Okay. Hmm. The Roman.ast still has this problem. We have some new line characters. Oh, this time it's in the body of a lambda. I see. So we, we still have some bugs in this code. It's definitely this case where we have the brackets surrounding the lambda body. And that's not as well tested. So, oh, it's the index problem again. This is an array. So this is index 0, this is 1, this is 2, not 3. But I had 3 here. This should be 2. That's actually a quite a common mistake that I tend to make. Okay, all right. We have the beginnings of a Roman numeral converter program. It can do one through five <laughs> so far. Suppose what we could do is if it's more than five, let's then we just subtract five from it. If it's six through nine, subtract five from it, call ourselves, put a V and then concat v with the result of calling to roman with this yeah i think that probably works this would be like else concat v with to roman number minus five the parser isn't happy now oh obviously we can't use the subtract operator we have to say subtract 
Uh, okay, that doesn't totally work. 9 is actually supposed to be ix. This is actually kind of a challenging problem. I am gonna actually take a break here and then perhaps continue next morning.